Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. One of the big trends here in 2020 was a shift in home fitness uh, with Peloton shares up more than 420% on the year. I want to break down a lot of those trends and whether or not they'll be changing in 2021 with our next guest, Abigail Cuffey is women's health executive editor. She joins us now. Uh, and Abigail, I mean, a lot of people out there were quick to scoop up whatever Pelotons were out there on the market. Some people had to wait. But that seems to be one of the big things uh, that's not going to be going away once you have one of those. Uh, people keep talking about them. Uh, it's a big, big trend here. It's a huge trend. We saw it explode in 2020, and it's only going to continue in 2021. Uh, people love their Pelotons um, and have really become uh, used to and um, recognize all the benefits of working out at home um, with a Peloton or with other exercise equipment. Um, there's there's a, a magic of being able to just go to another room or to another corner of a room and not have to go to a gym or to a class um, and still get that elevated um, experience in your own home. So this is something that is definitely here to stay. And Peloton, of course, uh, led the way on virtual fitness, but we've seen so many different players come into the fold during the pandemic, even the local gyms offering up sort of classes on Insta Live. How much of that do you think will actually stick once we do start to go back to our workplace, go back out to the gyms? Um, how much of this do you think it has been a permanent shift? I think a lot of it has been. Um, you know, I, I think that at Women's Health, we've seen um, so many people that never considered themselves home workout people just really jump right into the shift and not look back. Um, Women's Health launched Instagram Live Workouts um, in March, right after the stay at home orders um, went into place. And we have continued programming with these workouts all throughout the pandemic. And we have a whole community of people that say, when gyms open again, I don't think I'm gonna go back because I love working out at home now and I can do it and I get so much out of it. So I think that is very much here to stay. That being said, I think we all have been in, um, you know, if we've gone to a gym or been in a fitness class and really sort of experienced the feeling when everyone's together and sweating and all those good vibes. So I think there is definitely a place for that, but I think that, the how we've been working out and how we've been sweating for the past 10 months, there are pieces and elements of it that are going to stay around forever because now some people have just fundamentally shifted how they prefer to work out and um, and taken away some of the barriers and some of the obstacles yeah. to fitness. Yeah, it might be a while before a sweating and good vibes uh, go in the same sentence here in the pandemic. We'll see how that plays out. Well, it's, it's kind of triggered a lot of the same thing. It's triggered a lot of the same thing. You got people who might not have been big fitness people, you know, buying up Fitbits, buying up Apple Watches to maybe see how they're tracking on some of these things. But that's also been a trend even before the pandemic in the athleisure space, uh, you know, maybe feeling fit while you're wearing the clothes. Uh, and maybe that'll change when we go back to the office. But how has that played out here in 2020? That kind of trend, Lululemon, obviously, up about 60% this year, too. This has been huge. Um, I think we all know, uh, as we've lived in um, leggings, sweats, um, comfortable clothes, as so many of us are working from home, working remotely. Um, but really, this, this idea of activewear and athleisure sort of infusing our everyday looks, right? Like, we're not just talking sweatpants. We're talking now we have um, other types of clothing that now have elements of the sweatshirt, the sweatpant, um, just that sort of focus on this comfort now. And I think it's going to be very hard to go back to um, how we used to dress um, in so many ways, as you are seeing up there. I mean, the athleisure market, which has so much competition right now, is expected to see sales in the U.S. total 105 Point one billion in 2020. That is huge. Another stat that I love is that items including sweatshirts and sweatpants were expected to account for 31% of total U.S. apparel spending during the holiday season. So we are truly a sweatpant nation now. Um, but you're, as you said, um, big players like Lululemon, Athleta, Nike have all reported stronger sales than a lot of other retailers um, during this year. So that is here to stay. I think once you have comfort and have these elements in your apparel and in your clothing, you are going to always be looking for that. And we're seeing the market reflect that. 
Yeah, and Abigail, I guess if we're all being really honest, it's also comfortable because so much of us has gained during the pandemic, right? <laughs> Sitting at home and eating all the time, not necessarily getting out. Another trend that I thought was kind of interesting on your list here are uh, elevated breakfast, as you describe it, which I completely overlooked because I don't step outside my house in the morning. But um, how is that likely to change? And who do you think is kind of best positioned to take advantage of this trend? I think uh, I think we're going to see this continue in some ways. So we saw uh, without the commutes and with everyone at home, the idea of morning meals and what you're making for breakfast, the whole definition definition of it sort of shifted because it wasn't just, you know, grab and go, get out the door, um, eat something on your commute. It was I'm home. I, you know, have a little bit more time, perhaps and you may be feeding your family. And so people were able to sort of make meals or think about things differently, like pancakes, right? Like, do you make pancakes during the week and the weekdays when you're crazy? Usually no, on the weekends, yes, but there are these all these elements that sort of came into the week and changed how we think about morning meals. Um, I thought it was interesting that Whole Foods rated Epic Breakfast every day as one of their trends to watch for 2021. And we're so seeing that at Women's Health as well. It's this idea of I can have this um, exciting, flavorful, um, different meal than sort of the usual quick grab and go and make it um, and be on your way. So I think that is definitely going to continue in 2021. And um, hopefully for uh, for people that even people that are going back in some way, shape or form, um, this idea that breakfast can be different or more or a little bit more fun and exciting, um, even when we are starting to make Take ahead and take it on the go um, is going to stay with us. So I, I I hope that's one that's here to stay. I know it is for me in my <laughs> life and my home. Well, here is uh, hoping to a healthier and more active 2021. Abigail Coffey, executive editor at Women's Health. It's great to talk to you today. Thank you so much.